This is Andrew for the Chosen Prime with a video preview of X Transbox MX8 PN, or their take on a masterpiece uh, hoist. Um, this is an early, early pre production test shot, um, and therefore um, some of the plastic, paint, and overall tolerances might change when we get the final retail release. Um, as such, I do have some small issues with this particular copy that I have. Um, one, um, while trying to install his cannon arm on this hand, I actually broke it off at the peg. Um, I did not have that problem um, with their version of Treadbreaker Aegis, so for right now it's just on there with some blue tack. I accidentally scratched up his helmet here, um, transforming him, and then these little panels here on his legs, um, I can't quite get them to peg in fully. I think mostly just to a tolerance issue, and I'm almost certain that all this stuff will be fixed um, when we get to the retail version of this guy. Before we get to some detail, I want to just make a quick note of just how many accessories uh, Pian here comes with for both his truck and his robot mode. Uh, both this test shot and the retail version just has just a ton and ton of different accessories, and we'll show them all off in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a closer look up at his robot mode. Taking a closer look here at their version of Hoist, you can see that it is very evocative of the G1 Autobot. Um, very nice, clean uh, mode overall. Um, the backpack uh, fits all in quite nice. Not a whole lot of gaps throughout. Very nice uh, animation style, accurate um, legs here at the bottom. Nice bits of silver paint. Um, you know, the car mode detail here. It's overall nice looking uh, version of Hoist here with Pian. Um, again, his head here does have a blemish here due to transformation, and I'll get to that in detail a little bit later. But as far as overall posability here, he does have a head that can rotate side to side on a mushroom peg. It can also tilt upward and downward on a hinge, and then there's a separate actual hinge for transformation that can move as well. The arms are a little interesting. There's a ratchet that moves them up and down, but then there's also a ratchet at the arm here that can move them outwards, and they can rotate. So. I think this, again, this is a little bit weird and stiff on this version, but I think the retail one will fix it. Um, his arms here can rotate at the bicep. He can curl his arm about 90 degrees. The hands here um, are KFC X Transbot style of hands where there are individual digits for all the fingers. Um, he does come by default with uh, hands installed on both sides, but um, you can install um, cannon arm like this. Um, and it actually stays on this way in uh, his uh, vehicle mode if you like. And so it's a nice little bonus there. He can rotate at his waist. He's got universal hips that are pretty stiff. Forward, back. Um, there is a transformation joint here, so when you want to bend him at the knees, you want to kind of push on the orange part here. And it is ratcheted, so you can see that he's got a really nice um, knee bend. A little bit of uh, thigh swivel there. Um, ankle articulation is pretty uh, significant, and toe articulation. There is quite a bit of die cast in uh, PN here. His feet, the back of his legs, and parts of his torso are made out of metal, so he's uh, quite a bit heavy. He's uh, 9 and 5 eighths ounces, so he's very stiff and he can stand up very securely. Overall, for his height, he's about 7 and 3 quarters to the top of his head here, so he's a bit shorter than their Trailbreaker, and we'll show that off in a little bit. But he's a nice uh, overall size for what the Masterpiece version of Hoist should be. Um, as far as uh, robot mode accessories, he does come with, uh, again, several. Um, one is a kind of a toy accurate version of his head. Um, unfortunately, I'm missing the back half of the head here, but you can see that uh, he does have this alternate head that you could install if you like to get away from the animation. And this is just a silver um, face. Um, one of the fun little accessories he comes with are these little alien masks that they had when he was uh, being a little movie star. They have one that they actually made that's scaled for tracks, but you can just go ahead and put it on his face there, and you can see that you can have his uh, alien mask on there, which is a fun little uh, nod to the cartoon. He also does. He also comes with uh, several different uh, hand options. So in addition to this piece here, he's got this little hammer. That There's a mushroom peg that's on this hand. You would just slide this on, and you could have this little hammer. And then alternatively, he does have this little cannon piece here, like the toy, and there's a circular peg here that just matches, uh, once you flip this hand around, you can just peg in um, this piece there. As far as posability here for Pian, um, he is stiff enough at the joints and has enough balance with his weight and these kind of big heel spurs, you can get some decent poses out of him, even though he's a, kind of a big lumbering um, character. And again, he can hold these poses pretty well, and the articulated fingers on these type of uh, toys is always um, quite fun. 
And so since I showed off the transformation from robot to truck for their version of Trailbreaker Aegis, I'll go ahead and I'll show off um, his transformation from truck to robot. But before I do that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of his uh, truck mode detail. Taking a closer look at Pian in his tow truck mode, you can see that overall it's a nice clean um, vehicle mode. Again, this is a test shot, so this plastic paint and overall color may change. You can see it's a nice cohesive um, side and kind of a crane mechanism back here, some nice little boxes and detail and silver paint. Fairly clean undercarriage compared to the other um, hoists that are on the market. He does have rubber tires. They are a stiffer rubber tire and he does roll um, quite well. As far as features for his tow area here, this little panel here can slide down and it's got a little wheel. And then like uh, actual tow trucks here, these panels can slide out to the sides and you can actually have a uh, you know, masterpiece car kind of have its wheels sticking stick here and you can um, tow them correctly, which is a nice little bonus. One of the accessories that uh, PN does come with is this little ratcheted um, crane arm. It's got ratcheted at multiple points. And we just plug it into the back of his uh, vehicle mode here. And you can pose it. The claw arm here actually uh, is spring loaded so it can actually open up a little bit. And it's meant to homage the uh, 1G1 episode where him and uh, Grapple were able to digging out some Autobots, some, some rubble, picking up some rocks. And so here is Grapple with his version of the uh, kind of claw arm. Um, one of the other accessories that kind of matches Grapple is this little model of the solar power tower. Um, I believe this is test shot colors. But you can see that it's got little hinges here to match um, kind of the way it was in the show. And then here's the official one that came with the uh, Grapple. So hopefully the, uh, the retail release here of Peen will come with one that's a little bit painted a little bit better like this. But you can see here how um, both Hoist and Grapple look uh, good next to each other. Peen also comes with another uh, vehicle mode accessory. Here's a pair of uh, kind of uh, ball jointed and uh, hinged uh, claw arms. And it, just like the, uh, the Grapple piece, the ratchet piece, this just peg in here and then you can use the ball joints and the little kind of claws here open, which again, homage is a, a G1 episode. And these have a lot of different uh, kind of turning and bending points so you can kind of get these posed in some interesting poses. Nice little bonus here, accessory here for PN. Again, this is a test shot, so I don't have instructions, so I'll do my best to transform um, PN here into his robot mode fairly cleanly. We'll begin by coming to these uh, side panels here. We want to pull them down and away from the uh, sides here. There's a bunch of little mini tabs that lock in here into orange bits. And we want to kind of just get these uh, sections here um, loose. Again, this is a not very tight um, pegging mechanism here. We just want to, again, get this kind of out of the way. The uh, backpack or this back bumper here will come up. And then the entire, um, uh, this will lift up the windows will come in with these little pieces. And then make note, um, you can see these little orange pieces here that um, the green parts of the canopy here actually feed underneath it when you go back into his truck mode. So make note of that. But we wanna bring this all the way up and then I'll reveal the legs here. We can flip these panels down, um, rotate these pieces up and then curl them down just enough a little bit to kind of get this angle. And there's a tab or peg hole that matches um, here on the thigh. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Again, fold this up. Just bend in this little top piece in just a little bit. And it'll peg in to make his uh, hip skirts. Come to the legs and split them. Then we want to unpeg the legs from the uh, back, the, these parts from the front of the leg. And you can see this kind of uh, gray arm piece here. And this actually will go up and it's what lets it um, lock into place. When you're going back into truck mode, kind of make note of that and just press down the lock into place. We want to extend these. And then if we open up this panel here on the uh, leg, you can see there's like this uh, hinge mechanism in here. And it actually slides backwards and forwards on a pin. And what we want to do is we want to kind of push it um, with so that it fits like this. And you can kind of see how it moved up where the pin is moved up to the top here. And then there are orange tabs here on the legs that match the uh, silver part and then push in on the um, this panel here to make it as flush as possible and then there's this peg and this peg hole on this panel 
And I've had not had much luck on kind of getting this fully um, locked around there. I'm thinking it's a tolerance issue on this particular test shot. But normally this uh, gray piece would fit flush in this um, onto this silver piece. We can take the foot and now straighten it out. Flip up this panel for the back of his, uh, his foot. Flip down his toes. And then the wheels here slide up. And there is essentially his, his lower foot here finished. So we'll do the same, same thing on the other side. Open up this panel, move this forward, and then kind of hinge and press that panel so that it fits this way. And again, push that as far back as possible to kind of get this uh, seated correctly, and then close this panel. Take the foot, straighten the entire piece out, flip up the heel piece. Um, these little orange pieces here, they will just um, open up like so, and then they will reach all the way around and they will lock into place, making his knees. And it fits um, flush and locks on the sides. Don't forget to um, push up both wheels. So come to his uh, arms up here. And what we want to do is um, pull them down so that they loosen, at least this part does. And then the entire arm will hinge outward like that. And so we want to do that on both sides. Again, just kind of, it normally just peg into the tire um, here. Just take it and then lift up on that hinge. We can take the waist here and slide it all the way back. And that exposes a peg we'll use here in a moment. And now it's time to get his head out. Um, his head is fits very uh, snugly in, into this space. So it's kind of hard to get out. And there's clearance issues with kind of the size of his helmet. And so I've, I've had to kind of twist his head to get it clear. And you actually see there's a bit of blemishes here on his face that was due to transformation because there's just not really enough room to kind of fit um, within these gaps. But you can uh, get it through. So we move these panels out of the way. And you can see the hole we have to get through. And kind of just push it through and rotate it. And it should um, get clearance to kind of come forward to the front. We can take his torso here, and there's a uh, slot here at his torso where the uh, kind of truck mode will lock into place. The backpack, um, if we look here at these green panels, they're, um, they actually have uh, little pieces underneath that will rotate um, out. And I think it's mostly just for ab filler on each side, so you kind of want to grab the, the panel on each side. And again, we've got this kind of peg hole here that matches the tab that's here above the uh, back of the uh, truck mode. And what we want to do is feed this all through and kind of using this uh, hinge here, make sure that these panels kind of fit into the sides here and it can all fit and lock into place and that one peg will kind of hold it all um, securely into his back. And we come to the windows here, but before we fold them in, we want to fold these little pieces out. Um, they kind of, these kind of pieces block them, so we want to hinge these inwards. And then they will fold kind of in the backpack like that. We can fold up his little uh, kind of uh, light cannon here, or force field generator. And this wall um, fit along his back. We can rotate up his little wings here and fold this up onto his back. And there's his backpack. And then his arms, we want to rotate them down and kind of hinge them outwards and you can see how there's this panel here where these uh, this piece moves and we want to push down and rotate it into place and it'll lock into place. Extend the arm. We can open this panel here and normally we would either have a hand or the uh, cannon piece but again they kind of broke on this test shot but we would fold that piece out on each side. Rotate the hand around and push it around. We can hinge up these little pieces here to kind of move them further away from the arm. And so we'll do the same thing on the other side, just kind of angle this up, push down on this to kind of help with the spring, rotate it around, open up the panel here on the arm, flip out the fist or um, kind of cannon attachment, extend the arm, lock this back down, rotate at the bicep, 
rotate the fingers, come to this panel back here, just kind of hinge it upwards. Those little pieces we flipped out earlier on the backpack, there's actually a gray peg hole here that we just push this forward. It'll lock the backpack even in more securely onto the torso, just getting those little pieces lined up. And here is Pian in his robot mode. Very nice and fairly simple transformation compared to some of the other um, Masterpiece styled hoists. We'll compare some with some other currently available Masterpiece uh, styled hoists. On the left, we've got the very first one, which was uh, Bad Cube's Lori. In the middle, we've got Oculamax's uh, Artifacts. And then on the right, we've got uh, x Transbot's Pian. You can see that they're all quite varied in how their design, overall design looks. Um, they are all roughly the same height, which is kind of interesting, but the proportions are all a little bit different. Um, Lori here, he's got a bit lighter green tone overall. He's got glossy green as far as his outer um, car mode, but then everything else is this flat green. You get a little bit warmer, a bit darker when you get to artifacts. And then even kind of a, this more of an olive, a muddier color here with um, a PN, which maybe is a little bit more to the cartoon look. Um, of course, uh, Lori here has the ability to, to kind of get taller or shorter depending on how you want to set him up. This is his shortest uh, setup. But you can see that I think uh, Pian here on the far right seems to match the animation the best. He's got the kind of the cleanest legs. He actually is the, the most solid overall. Um, he's got nice bits of silver as well as the different colors. Um, build wise, you can see that they all have different, slightly different backpacks. Um, I mean, of course, artifacts here in the middle is mostly based off of their trailbreaker with uh, only a few minor differences as far as the backpack and these panels and the arms. And then Lori is considerably um, re engineered from um, their trailbreaker, a speed bump. And then other little details here that are different um, on Pian, you do get articulated fingers. You get um, completely individual with individual digits. Here you get articulated fingers, and then on um, Lori here you just kind of get the, the paddle hands. And overall you can see here, there are a lot of different options here for your hoist. But again, I think uh, P in here on the right is kind of the most animation accurate overall and kind of the most solid of the three. Truck mode comparisons across the three. You can see how the greens uh, look across in their truck modes here, from lighter to medium to a darker kind of olive color. You can see how their little paint detail on the side, the stripes change across all um, three figures, how the um, oranges are different and how their overall kind of towing mechanisms um, look. I would say here that um, by far, um, PN here has kind of got the cleanest and most concise uh, truck mode here. They all have some sort of uh, tow attachment. Uh, here you've got the little winch. Here you've got the little um, wheel pieces that uh, will hinge up and down here at Artifacts. And then again, here on uh, PN, you've got the kind of the, the sliding bar and the wheel holders. So nice little features for them all. Um, they all do have uh, some sort of rubber or silicone um, tires. They all roll fairly smoothly. And then the chrome, you get chrome on these two guys here, and then this is a silver paint here. But I think kind of overall, the best kind of cohesive, uh, clean kind of uh, vehicle mode overall here is uh, PN on the far right. Comparing PN with other official Masterpiece Autobots, here we've got Ratchet, um, Grapple, and Prime. You can see that their version of Hoist is shorter um, than other Masterpiece figures, which does again match the scale kind of set aside by the show. And you see how stylistically their version of Hoist does uh, fit alongside these other larger scaled and sized uh, Masterpiece Autobots. Vehicle mode comparisons here for PN. You can see how he scales with the other um, larger Autobots here. And he is, um, again, essentially the same size um, overall in vehicle mode here as uh, Masterpiece Ratchet. And it looks good here in his uh, green uh, tow truck mode here amongst the other official Masterpiece Autobots. Comparing X Transbots Pian with their version of Trailbreaker, this is uh, Aegis. You can see that even though they use the same base skeleton, um, they are a bit different, whereas Trailbreaker here is a quite bit taller and his legs a bit simpler than the ones that came on this version of Hoist. And then they have the same uh, chest, arms, and uh, basic overall transformation and uh, vehicle modes. But here you can see how they look uh, side by side here. 
that even though, again, they have the same basic skeleton, how uh, both characters here look different enough to uh, stand apart from one another. Comparing vehicle modes, you can see how their hoist looks really nice next to their trailbreaker. They are different enough, which is the front cab kind of looking um, similar. Same nice rubber tires on both. Nice rear detail on both. Very clean uh, vehicle modes for both of them. Um, it's interesting that even though uh, their hoist is shorter, he actually has a larger wheelbase than their uh, trailbreaker, which is interesting. But very, very solid uh, masterpiece versions of these two characters from X Transbots. Some final thoughts here for this preview sample from X Transbots. This is MX8 Pian, or they're taking a masterpiece hoist. Um, of the currently available masterpiece hoists that are on the market and that have been announced, this is the most solid by far. He also has the best kind of overall look. His legs are very clean, no loose parts, fairly simple transformation. Um, the colors work, and you get all, a whole lot of uh, fun accessories. Um, yes, there are a few issues with this test shop, but I'm certain that they'll almost all be uh, solved by the time we get the retail release. Um, the retail version is expected to come out sometime in May. Um, if you want to add this version of uh, Masterpiece Hoist to your collection or uh, their version of Treadbreaker Aegis, um, both are available for pre-order at the Chosen Prime, and um, they do come recommended. They're solid releases from X-Transbot, so take care.